Morning everybody, Eric Chaconis here for the PT on Ice Daily Show. Today is Clinical Tuesday and I um, can't even begin to tell you the courses that are coming up this week because there's so many now. So I was looking, uh, we just have such a tremendous response kind of in this post-COVID um, demand phase that we're in right now. We have courses going on every weekend, uh, multiple locations. If you've ever been wanting to take one of our courses, you have a specific course that you've been looking at that you haven't had an opportunity to take yet, it won't be too hard for you to find something uh, relatively close to where you live. That's how, uh, how much we've exploded as far as number of courses. If you're looking for something for 2022, those are starting to book up now as well. And if you're looking to host a course, we haven't been in your uh, area, in your city yet, then now's the time to get on the books for that for 2022. So on our website, we have a specific form, uh, a lot of information on uh, options for hosting courses. I would encourage you to look at that if you're interested in that. So uh, today's topic, what I want to talk about, I was at the AOMP conference all a uh, few days last week and had um, a really wonderful time. I mean, it's it's so nice to be back with everybody interacting again and, you know, getting to see um, people that you haven't seen in, in, in almost a, a two years now. So uh, that was really exciting. Shout out to Lindsay Huey, who I pretty much hung out with uh, most of the time. That was fun. Lindsay um, sort of had this idea that we would go on a you know how you normally do like a pub crawl or you go bar hopping, you go from bar to bar to bar? Well, Lindsay chose to do that, uh, encouraged me to do that with her for eating hamburgers. So you eat hamburgers in different bars as you progress through the town. We didn't actually make it that far. We only went to two different places, but um, that's something I probably won't do again. And what really wasn't that uh, cool. But anyway, uh, shout out to Lindsay Huey, all the other Bell and College students. They all were presenting their... The DSC students were presenting their research, and um, it was really an incredible experience. Chris Myers, who some of you may know, she teaches with Jeff at South College. Chris Myers, um, who's the clinical coordinator at South College, and her partner Matthew Vra won first place in the Best Research Poster Award. And, and their study, what they did, it was a systematic review, and they looked at all of the uh, literature, all the, all the research studies, related to lumbar fusion surgery. And they looked to see how many of them included uh, opioid use as an outcome. So how many of them tracked long-term opioid use? You would expect, you know, you go in to get lumbar fusion surgery, right? Part of the reason for that is to reduce uh, opioid use long-term, right? You'd like people to have more function and less pain and not need to take as many drugs. Uh, they found only 6% of the published studies actually <coughs> excuse me actually reported uh, long-term opioid use the ones that did report it there was a wide variability even up to 80 percent uh, rate of post-operative opioid use um, in, in the kind of medium term but but not a lot in the long term that not a lot of studies reported so it's really important questions important topics to look into and figure out like how are we really measuring success and outcomes for a lot of our different uh, procedures and interventions and, and, and management programs. So that was um, really interesting. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to Dan Rode and Jody Young. Dan Rode and Jody Young, the, uh, our research directors who, who advised uh, Chris and Matthew on that project. It was really exciting to see that. The, uh, the reason for the title, Learning from Clinicians, is I was trying to reflect, like, why do I really enjoy AOMP. Why is AOMP such a valuable conference uh, for me personally? And because I go to a lot of different meetings, right? Lots of different conferences. What's special about AOMP? And, and obviously the size, it's smaller, so it's not crazy and big, you know, right? you can get 
uh, it's better from a networking perspective and just getting to interact with all these really top uh, people in our profession. But the one thing about it is most conferences, and those of you who probably had this experience before, most conferences to get accepted to present at a conference, you usually they're looking for people that have published research in that area. So what you end up getting are these conferences where it's just lots of academicians and researchers sharing their work, which is valuable. There's tons of value in that, right? I learn a lot from that. I always say I love going to these meetings because I'm getting the current best evidence really before it's well before it's published, right? So you're getting kind of a, a good synopsis and understanding of the literature well in advance of, of, of publication. It also gives you the opportunity to talk to the researchers and ask them questions and interact with them. So it's a wonderful learning opportunity in that regard. But, you know, it I don't want to say it in, in a negative way, but it does tend to be a little bit, um, sometimes you lose the application, right? You lose that, all right, well, like, what am I, how are you using this in the clinic, right? A lot of times when we look at the literature, it's hard to translate it from uh, from the, the, the research to, to the clinic. And so I personally love learning from clinicians. I like to hear what a clinician, like especially a really, um, an advanced clinician that sees tons and tons of patients in this one specialty area and has just years and years of experience and trials and tribulations and has tried different things and some work and some don't. And, you know, they've seen all the variability. They've seen all the weird little nuances that come up in clinical practice that you really don't get at all from, from the literature. And so part of what I want to say today is to encourage you all, the clinicians, to come and present and submit your work and submit ideas that you have you know, and, and, and share what you're doing clinically with the bigger community of professionals. That's what I really love about AOMP is, is AOMP, you'll, you'll get a nice, um, every conference, you'll get a nice representation from these full-time clinicians. Some of them might teach Con Ed, you know, on the side or, or, or do a little bit of teaching work, but they are really in the trenches full-time clinicians. I'll give you a good example, Jim Rivard. Jim Rivard in the Pacific Northwest, um, you know, who has a, a long, like a, a lifetime of experience uh, in clinical practice as a business owner. Um, by no means is he a researcher or an academician. And that was probably my favorite talk of the whole week because he showed us how he kind of clinically reasons and how he works through cases. And he had a lot of different examples. And it was, uh, it was all kind of his, his exercise sort of clinical reasoning model that he uses in his own, it, it, you know, he kind of sort of came up with on his own. And it's not anything you're going to ever read in a peer-reviewed article or anything like that, but, but personally, I got a ton out of it. I found it to be very applicable. It was stuff that I could use, you know, uh, and apply it right away in practice. So I really, I really loved that. I thought that was great. I'm also having a lot of conversations with people. Uh, I've had a few people reach out lately, like, I really want to teach at ICE. I want to teach at ICE. And, you know, we pride ourselves on having clinicians teaching our courses. I mean, we aside from only a few of us, most everybody in ICE is in full-time clinical practice. There's a few of us that are doing more administrative work, and I'm, I'm in that camp. But, uh, but we really have a nice group of young clinicians who are in it day in and day out and then teaching these courses on the weekends. I personally think that's the best person that can be teaching a weekend CE course is somebody that's struggling with patient care right Monday through Friday and then comes out and shares you know their their um, knowledge with with you in a course like that and they're able to weave in current best evidence right you can do that you can weave in current best evidence as a clinician but make it applicable so anyway I'm getting a lot of not a lot but I've had a few conversations with people in the last two months that have reached out and said I really want to teach for ice how do I get in the door how do I get my foot in the door And my answer to that is always well you gotta take all the courses uh, be a TA, right? Get, get, like, interact with everybody, sort of become part of the culture, part of the family. And then, you know, sometimes you can work your way in that way. But, but now it's to the point where we're pretty full, right? We've got like a, all of our courses have multiple people teaching them, and it's going to be hard to do that. I really do believe if you start off at your local state chapter, present your work there, present whatever it is that you're doing clinically, present it there, the stuff that you're interested in. 
then take that to a conference like AOMPT, you know, get to the bigger stages, to the, to the national meetings, and just being regularly presenting your work like that, you make a name for yourself, and opportunities open up, opportunities open up, right? If you do a good job with that, uh, a lot of people will, you know, you'll get good feedback, but a lot of people will notice that, and, and, and I, I will say this, that's how you always try and like talk about like what do I feel like really helped me, what do I feel like really helped me to get in to the teaching space and the continuing education space. And one of those big things was early on presenting at lots and lots of conferences. And it started off with posters and platforms and it you know moved to more breakout sessions, but always trying to submit something, especially at the state level, which is you know a little bit easier. Uh, to get into and then eventually uh, more and more and then before you know it you're presenting at CSM or, or uh, you know APTA annual conference or something like that so anyway uh, it's a lot of fun hopefully that encourages you and if, if none of that is, is speaks to you, you say I don't really love that then create co a course or a video something that you can do online disseminate that through social media um, there's lots of ways but we need you I did a PT on ice a long my four or five, four years ago maybe, Academia Needs You was the title of it. Academia Needs You. And I made the argument of why academia needs these motivated clinicians, right? We need more people teaching our entry-level DPT students that are in the clinic day in and day out. And uh, this is the same thing. The profession needs you, right? The continuing education world needs you. The conferences and the meetings need you. We need you to give us that applicable, hands-on experience that you're having and, and share that knowledge. You know, that's a really important thing. We are doing it right now for, for DPT, so I'm creating, I've talked about this before, but if you're new um, to the show or just don't remember, I'm it really helping to create a DPT program, a brand new DPT program. It's in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Bellin College is where I work in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And with this DPT program, we have really committed to hiring local clinicians to run our labs and to be our adjunct faculty and to be in the classroom with our core faculty. So every single class has a core faculty member, in it, obviously, but also two, maybe even three, depending on the, on the, on the class, clinicians, local clinicians that are, that are in the clinic day in and day out. Uh, bringing that relevance to the students. I think that's very, very important, and we don't want to lose that. So I uh, hope that helps. hope that encourages you. Have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody. Oh, sorry, I forgot to end the video. <laughs> I shouldn't hit the button. I'm trying to upload this to Instagram. Have a great day, everybody. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.